I am unashamed. What about you? So we're back, unashamed, and we got our youngest brother, Jeppy Co. Welcome, Jep, back to Unashamed. It's always good to have you on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, Jep's Jep saw we had an uh, he saw me in an in an I can't even say that. Jep saw me last night, and it was kind of an embarrassing moment. So Missy got this thing for the little baby that we have because he he loves to kick. So and these people have these inventions in baby world that. And look, trust me, there's a new box at my front door or from Jep's wife because they're right down the road for the little baby that we have. So the one they had yesterday was it, it's it's like a kind of a seat with bungee cords on it. Yeah, it's like a bouncy seat. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's called. Yeah. But you look, you you hang it up from like a hallway or a doorway. And it it's like a bungee cord, and they jump, they jump. But he just was he was just standing there in it, and I was like, "No, you got to jump." So I started jumping. Now it was just me and him because Missy put him in there and took off. You know she needs a break. So I start jumping, and finally he starts jumping, and we're jump, we're jump, jump. jump. Well, then and, I, and Missy was jumping. Well, the first thing that happened was Missy goes and runs and gets a video camera. Because now, when you're at your just, this is the most embarrassing thing that you can do. You know, 53, we've determined that I am 53. 53-year-old man jumping up and down. It, it's just, there. she's like, I got I to gotta get this on film. And so she does that, and then she starts jumping. Well, then all of a sudden, the dog, I hear the dogs bark. I look, and there's old Jeff. He snuck in. He's been watching this because I have he's my jumped. back. Is he jumping now, too? No, he's, he's, he had a look on his face like, so I, I can't unsee. This what is I, what I saw. So I walk up to Jace's kind of side door. I see him jumping. I can't see the baby is in between him and Missy. And it looks like they're just jumping together like, and I'm like, what are they doing? Some kind of workout class? But they're laughing. I was like, they've lost their minds. It was the weirdest looking thing I've ever. And I just stood and watched them for. Jessica was like, you should have filmed it, which I should have. That would have been hilarious because it, it looked funny. There, I thought they were jumping to the 80s or something. We were all jumping in the middle, in between the kitchen and the living room. I mean, you like, were jumping for like joy. to the point of I got out of breath and had to sit down. <laughs> I was yeah. getting dizzy. Well, and she, he kept spinning around, which led, look, right after you left, well, look, when I got him out of the jumping seat, here's what they didn't tell you. It's probably in the manual somewhere. It just, I felt, it was like somebody just popped me like that, and he just projectile just Ooh. right in the chest, just, just like so hard. It was like a pop. I just looked down, just the warming sensation. And so then I started gagging because I was already out of breath. That didn't end well. No. <laughs> well, that's what happens, Jason. First, just everybody's jumping, then everybody's puking. That's that's, yeah. that's the way. That's where it always winds up. And you know what's funny is because, I mean, it hit me, and I looked at him, and he just grinned. Yeah. I thought, boy, you rascal. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's the only time in your life that, you know, you can get away with just throwing up on people. You know, after a while, yeah. that that becomes that's a that's a D.E.D. Don't ever do. So I thought it was funny. Jep saw me at a vulnerable moment. Ha ha ha. So here, here next it thing was I really awkward. So Jep, Jep, you're back. To, you're back in West Monroe. I don't think you've been on the podcast since you've moved home. Because yeah. the, the last time we had you on, y'all were just talking about doing the show. So tell us a little bit about what's it like to be back in West Monroe and kind of what, what you're up to. Uh, it's been good. It's a lot more uh, my speed. I mean, honestly, I miss like redneck folks. You, you live in Austin. I mean, we wasn't in Austin. We were kind of south, but... Nobody's from there. Everybody's from California or New York. So it's just like a, and they're not, I met some great people, some, uh, some terrific friends I think I'll have forever, but I miss just good old. Yep. I lived there in Austin. You know, it's just like, I miss that. Hey, the name, they say 
it weird. We're weird, or what? What is the slogan? Keep this? Austin weird. Keep Austin weird. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Yeah, <laughs> they really are. They are nailing that. Because <laughs> I thought the Keep same Austin thing, weird. man. When I got back here, I was like, oh. They're but ready. basically, well, we've been fixing a lot of stuff that was wrong with our house, which has not been fun, like the AC and da da da. Yeah, we rented it, and then you had some other people rent it for a while. But then yep. it was kind of left empty for a while too, and yep. that was, that's kind of hard on houses when nobody's yep. kind of keeping up with stuff. But we're back. So in what groove. about your, kids. So you got two kids in college, right? Yep. The two older girls, and they're in Abilene. Yep. Uh, both, right? They both go to that's right. Yeah, ACU in Abilene. Yep. And then, um, and so, what about the littles? Are they excited to be? What does Gus think about? Because he only knew Austin. So what's what does he think about? Uh, he loves it because. My kids are real close too with Jessica's mom and, and my mom too. But um, so she's been over a ton and it's been great. So and they like the they are going to OCS was where I went to high school, and they love it. It's a it's a good school. So everything's good. Well, you never. I mean, you're five minutes in this. And you never said. I mean, you've been hanging out at my house a lot. I thought you'd say I came back. I'm enjoying being back with my brothers. And I'm not even mentioned. Well, <laughs> I thought that was implied. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've okay. enjoyed hanging out with you. I've made him an awesome steak for his birthday. Oh, he did. Jeff has, uh, you know, his cooking skills has they've escalated to a point to where I mean, he whether well, he cooked me a hamburger. What was that? A couple nights ago. Yeah. I mean, well, I was recently he, asked who's the best cook out of all the brothers, and I was like, I mean, to be honest with you, it's it's me. <laughs> it used to not be, but it is now. I've, I have mastered. Well, it's another level. Hey, I have to admit, they. So we have a revolving meal once a week. We cook. Now this sounds like it's not that great, but Missy, she's taken beans and rice and cornbread to another level. It's the best in the world. It really is. Look. You hear what he said? He he validated it. She just she took it and she made it. It's the best in the world. That was a large step on her part. Oh, I know She's it was come a big a long one. way. And so I just said after a while, once it once she honed it down to where it is now, I said we must eat this once a week, and let's make it let let's make it an event. We invite the neighbors, the family. Al, you've participated many times. So when Jep and Jessica moved in, because they, I mean, Jep, I would have to admit, he's he's a better cook than me overall. I mean, there's a couple things that I think I do better in the wild just game. Just pan Hashtag cornbread truth. or just uh, fried cornbread? Yes. <laughs> well, it's pan <laughs> cornbread, but it it's, uh, it's basically a hybrid in what y'all make and then what Lisa makes. Yep. It's it's somewhere in the middle of that because y'all have the little you know the appet what I call appetizer the little crunchy cornbread yep that it's good for appetizer but it's not a main event and and I think <laughs> Lisa's is such a main event that if I it's eat a piece a, of that meal. I got to go lay down <laughs> in the fetal position so it's somewhere in between the middle is where <laughs> Missy it's a great description yeah yep. so. And I mean, I'm passionate about this, but Jeff and Jessica, they love it. But I think they felt like, look, we need, we'll take a night and we'll have us a meal. But I'm like, well, you're, you're trying to, you got to, this, this is a big request, but I believe Jessica, I don't know if you participated in that, but she, she did this beef stew. I think I talked about it on an earlier podcast. It stopped, it stopped me in my tracks now. Of course, she took filet mignon. And basically made now mom's soup. Well, we we just called it soup, but it's basically a beef stew. She took that to the tenth or perhaps hundredth power. Hmm. Now she did put filet mignon in it, so I would well, call that cheating, I guess. But why wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> it's I mean, oh look, super good. Yeah, but I just the broth. <clears throat> I tasted it and I thought. Whoa, 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 whoa! I got me a big bowl then, and she said, "Do you want that?" I was like, "Oh, I, I'm." 
and then when I ate it all, I said, well, that's now. So, so now two nights of the week, we have a meal together, inner family meal. And I just thought I'd let you and know. Then, yeah, and then to. sometimes we just neighborhood it. Yeah. And, well, you know, Willie is a good cook, but then Willie tends to go a little overboard on well, whatever he, you know what I'm saying? Phil has he him just, accurately depicted in that he's a gullion man, and I'm always <laughs> slum gullion. He, it makes me nervous because I'm not sure what's in there. Nobody and, uh, does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to. It's I've a, never been a casserole man because most people who make casseroles, they're taking two or three things that you don't like by themselves and slapping them together, yeah. and yeah. then all of a sudden trying to create magic but now now we just have three things that are particularly not good all together in one pile while you're there i've i'm now finished with uh, a yearly uh thing we make uh we made uh wild grape jelly out of texas okay. out in the texas out in the hills out there did you go to texas and get the grape no some some guy he was a oh, friend of my him. brother's okay. who passed on tommy so he sent the grapes and I, I picked them all, cleaned them all up. You know, got the juice out of them. So we've got... Uh, now, you say grapes. when he sent them, did he mail them or did he send somebody? No, no, no. That's, took a vehicle, no. sent oh, a vehicle okay. out there to oh. bring them back. His name is Dwight. His yeah. name is Dwight. He's a friend of mine. And they met him in Longview and got the grapes. I mean, this was a whole operation. Yeah. <laughs> we so we, have we wild, were going to get those grapes. Grape well, jelly. I want to try that today because oh, we, yeah. have, we have a special guest it's that we're going to introduce. But we I wanna... have a Mayhaw jelly. It's all put up. We have we what, just finished up with the slows, but uh, okay. well, Mac Hobbs, my cousin, sent a, a bottle, a large, about like a gallon, of uh, blackberries. So we have this year it already stored, ready to go. All right, I like. We it. have these four kinds of jelly, and uh, we just finished up with the with the uh, slows. They're yeah. a fall plum, yeah. early fall. And they fall on the ground. We pick them up. I must have some if you don't. Oh, mind. it's delicious! I'll give the country yeah, western man Aaron. I'll give him a jar. Well, of that. let's. That, I was going to that, Al. So yeah, so uh, we're going to have a special guest on after the break, and uh, and you guys met him, I guess, when you were uh, metal detecting out in the Abilene area. Is that is that? We were accurate? filming we'll the show, about and we, and one of the episodes we were in. A World War II training camp in Abilene, and uh, okay. Now, Jelp, I can't remember how we how we exactly met. He wasn't walking down the side of the road. It wasn't one of those deals. <laughs> True to country music form, like hitchhiking. He's yeah. country music singer, guitar on the back. Pick him up. Was it that? But I, it was it was similar. Cause, well, we have some mutual friends in Abilene because I've spent a lot of time there since my girls go to school there. So, gotten to know some of the locals. And somebody said, oh, y'all need to go to Aaron's place and, like, metal detect because it's awesome. It's like this. And it was awesome. How cool it is was. It? We didn't Property film being there, but oh, okay. we just we were scouting it, I guess. Well, Jace, you were impressed with him. And uh, so we're going to have him on the as our guest on the podcast. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will have Mr. Aaron Watson in the house. So uh, I'm looking forward to some cooler temps when you get here in the end of august the, they call them the dog days of august because they're hot you know do a lot of sweating when you're outside one of the places you notice that unfortunately is in your underwear you know they bunch up on you you get sweaty and you got to work in them you got a lot of chafing a lot of issues so the underwear that we have which are great and wonderful we've had them even before they were sponsors is tommy john and uh, the reason why is the fabric that they use and it especially helps you in the summertime but not just for underwear, but they have great loungewear and a lot of really cool stuff. And it's for men and women. Uh, so there's been over 17 million pairs sold. People love their Tommy John underwear and loungewear. And we're three of those that do uh, as well. So they actually help you stay cooler uh, in the summer. So you want to be sure and check them out uh, while we still got these hot temps. They have a the Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee as well. So if you don't like them, They'll uh, send you money back, but you will. Uh, go to TommyJohn.com slash Phil right now for 20% off your first order. TommyJohn.com slash Phil. See their site for details. Mm-hmm. 
So we're back. Uh, welcome, Aaron, to the Unashamed Podcast. Uh, I wish I was there to meet you, but uh, I know you're going to have a good meal today. So, yes, we sir. Always thanks for having guests. me. Aaron, Aaron's lineage goes way back. Aaron, I knew you knew this before, but I'll just let you know that uh, there was Jabal. He was the father of those who live in tents and raise livestock. But 7,000 years ago, your ancestors, here he is. His brother's name was Jubal, which is your lineage. You go all the way back because he was the father of all who play the harp and lyre, the stringed instruments. You're a, you're a descendant from Jubal. That's why they got Jubilee. Yes, sir. That's your lineage. That's why you're here. Well, we God, cleared God that up. Yes, sir. I just want to let you know, man. Well, that you not don't everybody the, came from Jubal, but you did. You don't go the bloodline in genetics. You're like, if a guy plays a guitar, you don't need a DNA test. He's some a people, Jubilee. Uh, the, I'm a Jubal. Aaron, yeah, you'll understand Jubal. this. Some people, as it turns out, they say, man, they just got a knack for that. They seem to, they just seem to have a knack. You should. Do it's a, in your blood. Yes, from sir. Way back, some God made them the stringed instruments. So you're like, so now to this day, a lot of them, you know, you, they start playing, and you say it just seems like that is. You cool need to do music. a song about that. Pretty I'll, cool, I'll do it. Aaron. I'll give you a hundred like dollar bill you, you if you bet. can get the term "jubal" in a song. I can. I'll, I've done a lot of things for a hundred dollar bill. So hey, hey, hey you gotta that. remember, you I'm Jubal? not even in your league. You're a race inside itself. How do we spell Jubal? Because that's going in a song. What is the spelling? J U B A L. I got it. J U B. You get, get a tattoo a now. Just call me Jubal. They're like, where did you get that Jubal tattoo? I said, well, it's a long story. That's it. Let me tell you about it. Yeah, there you go. I love it. That's my great 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 grandpa. And what was Jubal's brother, Dad? With Jabal, Jabal was the brother. And he was he was the one that they made tents and uh, took care of livestock ranchers. The ranchers came from a oh, bloodline. So he has both of them. He's in Texas, and he and do you have cows? Well, no longer. We we but you've had them. I've yeah. been on your ranch, so yeah. We, we're kind of a we were a two horse ranch. Yeah. So you know, for entertainment purposes. It just sounds better if I say I got horses. Oh, I see. Versus saying <laughs> I got a horse. <laughs> it doesn't sound that good. <laughs> oh, wow, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. So yeah, this is a race. So Dad, who was my horse? <laughs> Dad, who was the who were the jelly makers back there in the in your Genesis account? I don't know. I, I got them back where, all the way to Scotland. Well, you got to tell them about that jelly now. When we visited Scotland, is from where we're from. I asked them there. Some guy had a little skirt on there, you know, one of the way they look. The kilt. Kilt. Or kilt. And I said, <laughs> I said, well, the Robertson name, I said, so so what are they good at? He said, jam and jelly makers. So well, I'm said, sitting yep. there with jam and jelly under my bed. Yeah. And I'm like, well, good night. That makes sense why I, well, I'm... This I'm, is a I'm, revelation, Phil. Do you hide, is that your hiding spot for your jelly? Yeah. I shouldn't have said it on air because, you know, somebody come along there and that's the end of the jelly <laughs> once they find it. Well, off yeah. air, we were talking about that. Not all jam and jelly goes under the bed. You have to taste it first. That's it. To be under bed worthy. I sampled it before it went under the bed, and I said, whoa. Do you realize you may be the only human being on this planet that has jelly, jars of jelly, multiple jars of jelly hidden under their bed? Yeah, that thought never crossed my mind. I was just putting it in a place I figured they wouldn't look. That would be the first place I would look for, <laughs> for money, hey. and I'd say, oh, yeah, it's jelly. Ooh. It sounds but less it appetizing, And though. I said, well, did we leave a good name? But when boy, we all went to the States in 1600, our ancestors, and, and he said, uh, I said, what was their reputation over here? He said, both good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought, well, well. fierce so, when so roused. Fierce when roused. That's one of my favorites. Ever. So, Aaron, you're from, you're from Texas. Have you always been in Texas? Were, were you born and raised there? I was uh, born and raised in Amarillo up in the Panhandle, and uh, and then I actually went to school at Abilene Christian University, and I met my wife there, and oh, wow. I thought, 
this isn't too bad of a place. Yeah, and you've been there ever since. Been there ever since, and it's a good place to be from. We live out in the country. We live probably about 25 miles south of Abilene. Does she make your concerts? She goes while you're, while you're performing? or? Well, you know that podcast y'all did before this about marriage? Yep. Yeah. I think that's probably a whole nother episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think it's one of those things. <clears throat> she saw the show so many times. She's, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm like a rerun. Yep. I she doesn't want to go is what you're saying. She goes sometimes, yeah. She's really been going a lot lately, though, but it's not for me. Uh, my oldest boy, Jake, he he has a knack for playing that guitar. Look, okay. Jubal, Jubal, all the way, Jubal. All the you, way up. You need to talk son. to him about sitting Bloodline. down and have the Jubal Bloodline. conversation. I'm going to say, Jake, we're going to change your name to Jubal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Jake plays... The guitar, the drums, uh, the piano. And he's you know he's playing football, basketball, baseball. But I, I I've taken him on the road with me, and he'll play acoustic. When for did most that of the show. start, Aaron? How old was he? Did Gosh. you notice that pretty quick? Mm-hmm. Like I handed him a guitar when he's like six, and was like, "Here's a couple of chords," and he just learned them, and he had rhythm. And mm. now I'll show y'all some videos later on. I mean, he's. He can play anything rock and roll. But if you think about it, Aaron, when you read way back to the father, that's right. Uh, stringed up, you say, it, the Bible, he answers that. It's the family business. Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, how many kids do you have? I've got three. Jake's oldest, he's 16. Jack, he's fixing to turn 15. And my favorite one, Jolie, she's 12. Okay. I like the J theme. Yeah, it's great. Unless you're mad at them. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I get that. And then they're all, you know. But I've I've changed. I don't. A lot of things have changed for me. You know, I we were talking about it. I I hurt my voice, my vocal cords, and uh, I had to have surgery. And so I was off for three months or so. And hmm. so you know, you kind of have to change your lifestyle because I'm used to. You know, walking outside, if one of the boys is, are over there in that part of the yard mowing, you know, I yeah. scream at them, oh, get yeah. their attention. Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy, Jubal. Jubal, Jake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jabal, what was Jubal's yeah. brother? Yeah. But, you know. If you'd have had this conversation before, you'd probably name your kids Jubal and Jabal. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, I would have lobbied for that. Yeah. Um, But now, you know, I, I texted them one day. They were... They were giving their mama some fits. So now you're text, having to text them. Texted them. I texted them. I said, my voice doesn't work, but my boots still does. Oh, Your yeah. great-grandparents, <laughs> wherever they are, when when that y'all came forth, were they all Texans? I'd like to think so. Yeah, because, you know, you know Jabal, he, he was uh, those who live in tents and raise livestock. Well, you said... He's got a horse. I think what happened is I literally think they they jumped on a ship right there from the Middle Eastern area. Yep. Came up mm -hmm. through the Horn of Mexico. Yeah. And said, there's hey. Texas. They said, there it is. Never left. Yeah. Because if you reel back probably a couple hundred years and looked around when they were found in the country, your, your kin folks, they probably but were out in there, no telling. You said, well, livestock of your... You know, tents. So y'all come come a ways. We had that reputation of just riding around on horses and singing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's his point. Tents, yeah, that blood runs deep, man. Not much has changed. I'd probably still be in a tent, but I married someone outside of my yeah my tribe. She yeah. is not a tent dweller. Yeah, that's right. We have that in common, I think. Our yeah. wives are a little different. And I, I haven't met your wife, but you told me that we we, yeah. we have similar uh, situations. Yeah, she's not a tent dweller. Yeah. So how long have you been making music at, at, on the yeah, market? Yeah, how'd you get into music? Hang on, hang on. Before you do that, let's take a break. So, Dad, you always used to teach us never leave home without your woman and your Bible, right? That, that was, a, that was always good advice. I would add one more to that because of 
traveling now on airplanes, your woman, your Bible, or your earbuds. Because that's very important, isn't it, Jay? To hear your worship and, you know, hear the things you like to do. Podcasts, maybe, for those of you that uh, use podcasts. Uh, one of our sponsors is a company called Raycon, and uh, they look, feel, and sound better than ever. They've got optimized gel tips, which is the perfect in-ear fit. Because you need them that fit. You know, you're moving around the plane. You listen to your music. Really great. Uh, they have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of people really love them. They have three customizable sound profiles, earbud tap functions. They have noise isolation. They have awareness mode. So a lot of really great stuff. Uh, I love mine. Uh, here's how you get them. Go to buyraycon. That's R-A-Y-C-O-N. Buyraycon.com slash unashamed. You're going to get 15% off when you uh, when you go there and, and place that order. So you're getting a good deal already. Buyraycon.com slash unashamed to score 15% off and have some great earbuds. When, when did the band come together? Well, you know, I was going to ACU. I was playing baseball. I hurt my back. My baseball career was over. And I played the guitar a little bit. Um, I was working a couple of jobs. And I had this guy ask me if I would play a show for his little business event. And he said, he asked me, he said, how much do you charge? I said, <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know. I'm going to have to talk with my agent yeah. <laughs> and get back to you. And the, the old man that was giving me guitar lessons there at ACU, uh, Dan Mitchell, I called him Dr. Mitchell, even though he didn't have a doctorate, he played that guitar like he did. Yeah. And I said, well, what do I charge? He was like, well, what's the event? And I was like, ah, oh, it's, it's for a doctor. He said, well, you should charge him a lot then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I remember I told the guy 500 bucks and I played for 20 minutes and got paid $500. Oh, man. And I mean, I don't know. I had to work three months of waiting tables and working on the school grounds to make that. And I was like, this is the law for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. and, and then, you know, you asked me earlier what, the name of the band was and we really don't the band kind of doesn't have a name now but in the beginning it was aaron watson and the orphans of the brazos band and every monday i would that was what my bank account was orphans of the brazos so and the that, brazos is a river running through yeah, the middle of texas yeah and we were always time. crossing that river and on mondays i'd take the money that we made to the bank and I did this for, you know, a couple of years. And one day, the little old lady that I always was doing my deposits with, she said, do you mind if I say something, say something to you? And I was like, yes, ma'am. And she was a grandma. Mm. And she kind of got a little teared up. And I was like, what is fixing to happen here? Yeah. She says, week after week, you come in here. And you deposit all this money for those little kids. <laughs> <laughs> the children of the, the orphans of the brothers. And it took me a second to realize, oh, she thinks that I'm raising money for orphan kids. <laughs> and I, I told her the truth. And the disappointment on her face. <laughs> so why were they called the orphans of the Brazos? It well, we just kind of felt like we were homeless because we were always okay. sleeping in a van. Was or the, you were <laughs> yeah, kind of but the, it was the the Jubal translate modern day translation. We were twin. You were, you we were, were tent dwellers for yeah. sure back Gypsies then. Gypsies, yeah, slash orphans. I yeah, okay. I disappointed that lady greatly that day. Yeah. Oh man, but you know, That's here we are. I, it, to make a long story short, I've always been an independent artist. I've, yeah, I've, I was fascinated when you when we got to meet you. We we weren't real sure how we met, but you were just a friend of a friend. We, mm -hmm. we went and looked at your place, and we scouted your place as a possible destination yeah. to metal detect because you had this. Uh, it's a nice ranch, and but it had a big hill on it. We climbed the hill. Mm -hmm. We uh, you were like 
you were giving us the play by play, which was funny because the first time we took a turn, you're like, "Yeah, right here's where I burned my first truck." And you said <laughs> your truck caught on fire. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh wow." Yeah, and uh, and we got up on the hill. And remember, you uh, you told us you had an idea of a romantic getaway with your wife on yeah. the top of the hill, but she didn't. That she... idea burn up just like that truck. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you. So what happened is. It was our anniversary, and this this area is this it's a, it's a mountain to us, but it's more of a plateau bluff, whatever you want to call it, and it overlooks the countryside, and it's just it's beautiful. a nice view in yeah. your defense. It is. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go pick us up dinner. Yep. I'm going to throw a little couple of sleeping bags and maybe a pillow in the back. We're going to go yep. up there. I took a picnic table up there. Yep. And then, look, it was hard to get up there. It was so, hard to get up yeah. there. I worked mm -hmm. and um, I had, we had dinner yeah. and I thought we'd just sit on the tailgate of the truck and watch the sunset. And then, you know, where this is headed is just, you know, straight. there's not a person. Um, yeah. And then, what? How far? A lot of miles. A lot of miles. A lot of miles. This is the perfect. I mean, I thought this was a great idea, which should have told me that things could go wrong here. Well, I thought things were going great. Yeah. And you know, and I was, I was putting the moves on Mama. Mm hmm. And about that time, uh, uh, you know, we got an Air Force base there, Dice Air Force Base, and uh, one of those B ones. Came flying over. Low altitude. Low and you're altitude. high up on a mountain. And you're, you've are you already, you know, begun the process. Here. Yeah. And that shut things down because she goes, well, my <laughs> word, what if they see something? I said, those boys are serving this country, girl. <laughs> and it was done. And uh, I loaded up that picnic table all by myself in the back of that truck. <laughs> It's funny now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, the, so, so do you have record companies knocking on your door saying, if you'll give us the money, we'll Once give you a little piece? Or did you say, forget that, Vance. We'll, let's just go. And, well, well, and before you answer, I was going to introduce that because you, what struck me about you, and I think while we hit it off, is kind of like us. We had a show that was on TV mm -hmm. that was not a religious show, uh, but we – you know, we're believers. And so God kind of used us in an environment which reality TV has nothing that we represent just on a mm -hmm. normal show. And here we are having a reality show, and I think it was a shock. So that's what I was say. You struck me because when I met, when Jep said, oh, he's a country music singer, I thought, oh, boy, I bet this will go good. But when I met you, I was like, I think he's actually a believer. Oh, yeah. And who's a country well, music singer. And I was going to say, uh, I mean, Aaron's known for being independent, like really well known for that, because my friend Bruce, a mutual acquaintance, when I told him I was coming to your place, he was like, tell him, uh, tell him to give me a call. So it, was, it was like he was, and he manages a lot of bands. Yeah. He wanted your ear just to yeah. say, hey. Well, you so, know, I, that was the preview I was going to give you is that you're on a podcast and we're the name of this podcast is Unashamed. And you were quite clear when I first met you that you were unashamed of your faith. And uh, oh, yeah. I, so I thought you could just describe that in that light. To well, you know, question. to answer your question, and dad's all in one. In the beginning, nobody wanted anything to do with me. And we just worked hard and, you know, played good, clean shows. Do you, you think know. it was because of your faith that nobody wanted anything to do with you? Or I don't know. Maybe I was. Maybe it could be my incredibly average looks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but an interesting thing happened. We just worked hard, and we worked hard, and we worked hard. And in two thousand and eleven or twelve, we had an album that we put out independently, and I got a call, and they said, "Hey." You won't believe this, but that sucker charted top 10 on Billboard nationwide. And that got my wheels turning. And I thought, well, if we can accidentally chart an album in the top, top 10, 10 without, what if we tried? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but they all told us, they said, no, you know, an independent artist can't do this. They can't do that. But we, I put out an album called The Underdog, and it became the first independent album in the history of country music to chart number one on billboard. And 
it just gave me this great opportunity to just give God all the glory. Yeah. Uh, you know, Rolling Stone called me up and they said, how in the world does some country boy from West Texas with no record label or any type of major funding, how does the, how do you outsell all these major label artists? And I said, well, I said, you just got to, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> got to give all the glory to God yeah. for blessing yeah. me with all these fans. Yeah. And, you know, and that's the thing. If you, if you come to my show, we have fun. Mm -hmm. And it's, we have fun. And I've opened for Kiss. You can open me. I'll open up that for anybody. That was interesting. Yeah, I'll tell you, this is, a little, I have ADD, so this is a little side deal. Hang, hang on, hang on, Aaron. <clears throat> Let's take a break. So it's that time of year for us. We start talking about hurricanes and we start talking about losing power. And, you know, dad has a generator for that reason, but a lot of people don't. And the one thing uh, you get in an emergency situation is you need food. And uh, one of our sponsors, uh, My Patriot Supply, uh, is our nation's largest preparedness company. And they're here to help us. They're going to help us by taking $250 off their popular ready hour three month emergency kit. So they're helping folks as they're fighting this inflation because, you know, they're saying, look, we want people to be prepared. We've got a lot of bad stuff going on. So they stocked up on food when the prices were low, and now they're able to pass those savings along to us. $250 savings. So it's really good. you got to act now because this offer is going to expire soon. Your kit will ship free and fast. So get the lowest price in three years by going to prepare with Phil, P-H-I-L, preparewithphil.com. Save $250 off three-month emergency food kit to get that peace of mind. Preparewithfield.com to get this deal. All right, go. Yeah, don't feel bad. I have ADD. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. We opened for Kiss at Shine Frontier Days, and uh, my agent told me that Gene Simmons requested that I open for him. So I was like, okay, that's weird. And for those who don't know, so these are the guys, the painted faces painted with the faces. tongue hanging yeah. out. And, okay. They're from They're, my era of music. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, Gene is a big old boy. Yeah. And we went to take a picture together, and I remember his hand kind of come around my face right here, and I thought, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought he was going to fish hook me or something. Yeah. <laughs> and he just said, you are a powerful young man. And I said, uh, thank you, sir. And we took a picture and I got on out of there. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> Put his hand on my face, told me I was a powerful young man. I didn't need any more compliments from him. <laughs> but, you know, you know, I've just been blessed. I love music. And, um, it's been neat what we've been able to do. I mean, independently, yeah. and it lets me do whatever I want to do. I mean, if you come see me at a show, it doesn't matter if I'm playing at a honky tonk or a dance hall or a fair or rodeo opening for Kiss. Boy, and today we clarified your lineage. You, we sure did. It goes way back. <laughs> it's all making sense. Well, it goes now. with the livestock because I'm not gonna lie. So we met you. I had never uh, heard your music. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Phil was part of the problem. When we were young, country music was frowned upon. And I'm not real sure why, but it's just because you were a rock and roll guy. What, who do you like? Who are your... All these old guys. Oh, right? he's Leonard Skinner, CCR. CCR. Pink uh, Floyd. Pink Floyd. Oh, yeah. You ain't wrong. wrong. You ain't wrong. So he... But but he would tell us, you know, well, they can't sing. And, uh, but when the only, the only time that he said, well, wait a minute... Is because when uh, Hank Williams Jr. came out with A Country Boy Can Survive, which basically depicted our lifestyle. Our life. yeah. yeah. And he was like, well, <laughs> now the words are pretty good there. I mean, that was the <laughs> little gray. So, I, you know, he left that open a little bit. But what I was going to say is when we listened to your uh, CD, I'm not sure which one. Maybe it was the greatest hits on the way back. I was like, let's check this guy out. My not so greatest hits? No, the greatest hits. But the first <laughs> song we listened to was called Freight Train. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I thought, now this guy could be an auctioneer. Because I couldn't believe, I was like, how many takes did it take? It goes like this. You ready? 
I'm going to give them that two, four, four on the floor like my little boy son did before. Got the pretty girls out there begging for more. Got to give them all what they came here for. Doing my thing, singing my song, right on track. I'm chugging along. I'm here and gone like yesterday. Rolling like an old freight train coming on down the line. Feel that diesel engine whine. Smell the smoke. I hear the ears grind full steam ahead. I've out of my mind. Too far gone to be turning back. One on word. Jubal. Jubal. <laughs> <laughs> One word. Anybody that could do that? I Jubal. Way oh, when he did That's that, because I thought livestock. <laughs> I thought that well, he's got a guitar. That is cool, man. Live, is. Oh, cool. my goodness. You know, we, uh, we just have, we have fun. That is a great song. I mean, I, I love the song. So when when people come to my show, it's important that they they feel that it's money well spent. It's important that they know how much I love my country, mm-hmm. and I can share my beliefs through my music and my experiences. My daddy is a hundred percent disabled from serving our country. I grew up at a VA hospital, so I've written dad songs, and because I write my dad these songs, you know. I, I have all every night I have my veterans and my active duty and mm-hmm. raise their hands and I have the rest of us that don't raise our hands. I ask them to turn on the light on their flashlight because I need our veterans and our active duty to to visually see that they yeah. are appreciated. Yeah. And and then there's the part where, you know, I kinda it's the cowboy church part of the show. Yeah. And um you know, I think I really started to share my faith. I was never ashamed of it. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't probably mature enough to know how. Yeah. But um, I started to share my faith about strongly, more boldly, probably mm, about 12 years ago. Um, my wife and I, we had a little girl pass away shortly after she was born and her name was Julia Grace and that was tough oh man and i i i just struggled with my job after that i never my faith i never struggled with my faith i mean jesus came back news flash jesus came back because yeah. the world's not great yeah bad things happen mm-hmm. and but a little lady by the name of elsie frost um, she's the mother of legendary bull rider Lane Frost, hmm. uh, who died, you know, 20 something years ago, but maybe 30 years now. Uh, she shared something with me that just got me refocused. And she said, Lane was a world champion bull rider, but that wasn't his greatest achievement. She said that Lane's greatest achievement came a year before he died when he asked Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. Yeah. And I wrote her a song called July and Cheyenne. And I sing that every night and it gives me an opportunity to share my struggles, my weaknesses, mistakes I've made and struggle and then share what Jesus has done for me. So I don't have to sit out there and point at people. I just point at myself and let them know what what Jesus has done for me. And that kind of started the that started the ball rolling. And that's kind of mm-hmm. we're in the next chapter still doing the same thing. I mean, it's. Oh, I got a, I got this old rock and roller right here. Let me, let me, let me tell you a little. Let me show you some. Oh, I some, like this. Some rock and roll <laughs> lyrics for you. Hang, hang on, let's take our last break while you're doing that. Well, one thing I could say before we do that, uh, Aaron, is it. <clears throat> There's a lot of weirdos out there. I'm just glad me or you are not one of them. Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? That yes, sir. I'm blown away by your story. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, by the well, way. and I know exactly what you mean about coming back home. I mean, these are good parts, good people. Yep. Um, but y- the re, you know, I I texted you and said, hey. If you ever want to have me on your podcast, yeah, and this is a blessing for me. I I wasn't able to work for four months, and in the middle of that, I had an album come out called Unwanted Man, and I couldn't even promote it. And music is the family business. Yeah, you can't even talk. So, well, tell us about that. What what it, was that? The lyrics you were going to read on your yeah. rock and roll. All right. So I wrote it. this song. Uh, there's this old man named Mr. Pete. And I met him in college. And both my granddaddies had passed away, so there was that void in my heart. Yeah. 
And I remember I met him. And he invited me over for dinner that night. And he and his wife, Miss Dorothy, they made me chicken fried steak. And it was amazing. And then we watched a John Wayne movie. I think it was Big Jake. Mm -hmm. And that started a tradition. And they would always have me over. And we would watch movies after dinner. We drank a lot of coffee together. And over the years, we grew closer and closer. I remember when I bought my first house after we got married, I didn't have a lot of tools. And he'd always bring over his tools to help me remodel the house. And he had a stroke. Um, and my wife was pregnant with our first son, Jake. And uh, Mr. Pete started really going downhill. And he called me up one Sunday after church and he just said, Aaron, I need you to come over to the house. There's some things that I need to talk to you about. And I just said, yes, sir. I'll be right over, Mr. Pete. And I went, I went over to his house and where his recliner used to be was now a, a hospice bed. Mm -hmm. And I helped sit him up. And uh, I'm sitting next to him. I'll never forget. He said, Dorothy. He said, uh, did you bring us in here some coffee? You know, real, but he was loud. I'm trying not to scream in the mic, yeah. but he's, he's half deaf, so he's yelling. And sweet little Miss Dorothy came in and brought us coffee. And we sat there, and for the next hour, he needed to share with me things about being a being a man, being a father, yeah. being a husband. And I'm fighting back the tears the whole time because it's a goodbye talk that he yeah. was having with me. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> I went out the door. He said, I need to take a nap. I'm tired. And I hugged him and I said, well, I'll see you again soon. And I went out the door and I just remember crying the whole way home. And he died a few days later. And then a few hours later, my son, Jake, was born. It was oh, a, wow. yeah. it was a, it was a beautiful, bittersweet. Yeah. It was like a transition almost from a heavenly perspective. It was. He was in the torch. It was, he was 88. Yeah. And I wrote down, I went home and I wrote down some things. I wrote down, the old man said, and I wrote down some things. Then I wrote down, the old man said, and I wrote down some things. And it took me 14 years to finish this song. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> I couldn't get through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, I finally finished this song and it's the song that's, that we just released and and the old man said, son, I don't have long to live. He slowly raised his cup and he took a sip. And the old man said, I fought a dang good fight. So I pulled up a chair and sat there half the night. And the old man said, don't take a single day for granted. Love like there's no tomorrow. Tend to the seeds you planted. Be a good friend and a brother. Love your children and their mother. And die by those living words in red. Mm. Mm. Pretty cool. I like That's this. Awesome. <laughs> Real cool. And the old man said, money really ain't worth a dime. Then gave me his golden watch and said, it's all borrowed time. And the old man said, if I could do it all again, I'd spend more time loving her. And a little more time fishing. And I was able to take his words. Don't build walls around your heart. Never shackle up your soul. Love is the only thing that you'll take with you when you go. Always be quick to forgive. Forever slow to throw stones. Just like a flash. Life is a dash between the birth and the bones. And for me, it's just been neat to, to honor him, but also, I mean, this is cowboy gospel yep. music. Oh, that's connected. Oh, yeah. It's authentic, and it's, it's real life. You know? So it's been fun for me all these years later to, you know, he would have he loved you guys. <laughs> That's like an awesome dude. He would have fit right in. Oh, he was he was amazing. You know, he 
how it, what how he claims what happened is he smoked from age he smoked cigarettes for 75 years age 13 to 88 and he said that uh the doctor finally convinced him to quit and he had a stroke the week later <laughs> <laughs> and he was I remember I went and saw him, and this is the kind of character he was and the kind of man he was. I went and saw him at the hospital, and I said, Mr. Pete, what happened? He said, well, you know that little tiny bathroom there on the other side of the kitchen? And I said, yes, sir, I know. And it's a tiny, just a commode, and there's one of them little tiny corner sinks. You can barely get in there and shut the door. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I went in there to, to do my business, and I had a stroke, and I fell in between the the wall and the commode, and I was stuck. He said, brother, talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just great. Oh, he was just great. And so for me, I'm a songwriter. And, yeah. you know, the, the good times and the bad times, they make for good songs. Yep. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing your heart, and you can see that in your songs i mean it's kind of like it reminded me of us you wouldn't think it's a religious concert is these are just people having fun but all of a sudden that authenticity comes out and that passion and belief and i think that's what connects to people you know you are mm -hmm. who you are and yeah. you're real and uh you have a positive spin well tell us before we go yeah before yeah how can people find your music and all and things yeah. like that well you can get it just about anywhere you can get some music. I mean, it's on all the streaming platforms and shoot. I got, since I write, known everything, I got permission. Look, I'll write it right here. You can play Old Man Said for your listeners. There it is. That's that's legal. Or a handshake. I like it. <laughs> nice. So we can play some of your songs here. Yeah, you can play my songs. Yeah, I like a man that doesn't have much red tape. There's not, I don't, yeah, we don't have a lot of, Red Tape in Buffalo Gap, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we were. I was trying to think the exact location. Oh, you now so so I gotta tell everybody so we went up on that hill and I was saying rumor has it that these were some bunkers and yep. that the the army boys trained how to take a hill. You taught, that's what got us there. And look, why yeah. don't we do this, Al, in overtime? Yeah, let's do that in overtime. Jep actually found something, a relic. Yeah. That you still have, right? Yeah, oh, it's there. He, Jep found a relic on the hill where his wife turned him down the night the plane flew too low. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that could be another song. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna head to over <laughs> we're gonna head to overtime. Aaron, uh, thanks for being on our podcast. If you want to follow us over and hear about this uh, this story, you can do that uh, by blaze blaze tv dot com slash unashamed and uh, subscribe. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.